I'm Nathan Wolf, and I'm a microbiologist based in San Francisco. And um, the book that I wrote that's been uh, nominated for the Royal Society Winton Prize is The Viral Storm. And it was a book that I wrote um, really about sort of the nature of pandemics, the sort of natural history. Why do we have pandemics? What's the sort of history of the pandemics that we've experienced as a species? Um, but also, what's the nature of how humans are changing and how we've changed over the last couple of thousand years? And how does this influence the susceptibility that we have to these pandemics? Uh, and then finally, uh, what are some of the, the sort of novel approaches we're going to have to use if we're going to be able to get ahead of some of these pandemic problems that we're experiencing? Located in the west of the country, near the border of Burma, Pung Truk is home to about 3,000 people whose livelihoods depend on the sugar and rice they grow. In December of 2003, it was also home to Captain Boon Manuch, a six-year-old boy who would be among the first people to die of a brand new human virus. Captain loved riding his bicycle, climbing trees, and playing with his plastic toy Dalmatian that pulled three puppies in tiny brown wagons as it barked mechanically. The captain also enjoyed helping his family on the farm. Nearly every family in Pong Truk kept egg-laying chickens. Some also kept roosters for cockfighting. That winter, as on many farms in this region, chickens in Captain Uncle's farm suffered from severe diarrhea, strange behavior, and weakness. A day or two before the new year, according to reports, the boy carried one of the six walking chickens home. That walk home would have lasted no more than a few minutes. A few days later, Captain grew feverish. A clinic in the village diagnosed him with a cold, but after three days without improvement, his father, Chamnan, a rice farmer who worked part-time as a driver, took him to a public hospital. More detailed testing using a molecular technique called the polymerase change reaction, or PCR, revealed that Captain was likely infected with an atypical type of influenza, perhaps one not yet seen or widely seen in humans. After 11 days of illness, the boy's fever finally began to cool off. However, despite intensive care, his respiratory distress worsened. Just before midnight on January 25th, physicians took Captain off the respirator. His lungs drowning in fluids, he became Thailand's first known death from H5N1, which would soon become known around the world as bird flu. The reality is when you, when you sort of really are hunting and butchering meat as our ancestors did and is really done by hunters around the world, you have a tremendous contact with all the blood and body fluids. And what that means is any microbes in the animals that you've hunted, uh, really you're exposed to. And there's a lot of increased potential from that moment onwards for these microbes to enter into human populations. One of the things that I really tried to um, emphasize in the book is how radically things have changed and part of what that means is that humans are so interconnected and there's so many human populations that viruses have a tremendous capacity to enter into humans and spread around the world in a way that's never really existed in human history um, and that's sort of the the bad side of thing but on the other hand we also have this sort of interconnectivity also has bred a whole range of technologies that permit us to address some of these threats in radically different ways if you look at the intelligence community they've often looked at sort of chatter if you will sort of this pattern of uh, particular kinds of communication associated with novel spread of uh, you know particular terrorist incident we can actually monitor similar kinds of chatter. We can look at the rate of new viruses jumping into sort of human species, for example, as a way of sort of measuring uh, just how frequently these things are jumping over. And maybe what that will do is give us a sense of the things that jump over before they spread. And that's ultimately the objective of this work. Right now, there could be a virus spreading in human populations that basically was going to kill us in some years, but we wouldn't even notice it for some years before it actually spread. So something like HIV, you know, I hope that uh, the readers that come to this book will be, you know, obviously interested in the subject and that they'll walk away with slightly different perspective on the nature of microorganisms, a different perspective on pandemics. Um, you know, hopefully they'll have a, you know, a different sense of the way in which we interact with the microbial world and what it means to actually be a pandemic. You know, just so amazing that as a scientist, the notion of being associated with the Royal Society in any way is uh, incredibly exciting. But you know, certainly if you look at the other individuals 
the history of folks that have won this prize and that are are nominated. Certainly, it, it's a you know it feels very special to be included within that group.